Okay, so this is the second to last section in, section, in chapter 19 on conservation of momentum. And this is very similar to what we've done in the past for particles. If the sum of forces is zero, then you can effectively say that the linear momentum is conserved. So L1 equals L2, where L is mass times velocity. So I wrote that as a vector, but really you can do that in the x and y direction. That's the point of writing that L is a vector. Similarly, if the sum of all angular impulses is zero, about an axis is zero, let's call that axis O, then H zero, which is the angular momentum at instance one, equals angular momentum at instance two, where H is the distance from the axis O to the center of mass times cross product with mass times velocity. So this is the expressions are pretty standard. Uh, the only thing, the new thing over here is that the linear and angular momentum are conserved when the sum of forces is zero. Okay, so let's see where uh, these formulas could be applied. Okay, so this is actually a classical problem in fully extended. The turntable is rotating with an angular velocity of 0.5 revolutions per second. Determine the angular velocity of the man when he retracts his arms to the position shown. So, this is his 
position initially. He is spinning at 0.5 revolutions per second. When his arms are fully retracted, like it's shown here, this is instant two. We got to find the angular speed. Okay. The key here is that his inertia changes because uh, once you move your mass closer, the center of mass will remain the same, but then the, the inertia, which is mass times distance squared, changes. So now the specifics about the inertia. When his arms are fully extended, approximate each arm. So let's draw this. It's easiest to visualize this. Each arm has a uniform. So let's do instance one. I'm going to draw the same person but as cylinders because it's, it's said that you can approximate the body and hands as cylinders. So, so that's the person and he has his arms fully extended. Each arm is a uniform 6 kg rod of length 650. It's actually shown over here, 650 uh, centimeters or 0.65 meters. That's how it is. So that's 6 kg. And his body is a 68 kg solid cylinder of 400 mm diameter. So this is the person's as a 68 kg cylinder as shown with a 400 mm dia. So that's 400 is 0.4 meters. And you told that, let's see, something about the dumbbells. Uh, each dumbbell consists of 2 kg spheres of negligible size. So the dumbbells are here. And they are, each of them is, well, there are 2 5 kg spheres. So each dumbbell has 2 spheres. So each sphere is 5 kg. So 2 spheres in one dumbbell <coughs> will be 10 kilograms. Okay, uh, if I'm missing something. What is the diameter of the, his arms? 6 kg, 650. Uh, is there any information of the diameter of his arms in the question? It's in the diagram? Where's that? But that's the length. Uh, what about the diameter of this. So this is, yeah, this is 0.65, I should put it here. 0.65. And this is uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.85, right? It's 0 0.2 plus 0 0.65. I'm trying to see what is the diameter of his arms. I think, uh, no. I need the diameter of, of, well, of his arms <coughs> to be able to find the inertia. Do I, I don't see it here, whatever. I've assumed it to be, oh, right. So actually it turns out I do not need it because when you find the inertia of we define inertia of a rod about an axis like this. It's mass times length squared divided by 12. <coughs> so I do not care what the diameter is. However, for this geometry, when you have an axis passing through this, the inertia is mass times radius squared divided by 2. So yeah, you need the radius here. You do not need the radius here. Okay. Uh, that will come in the, when I solve the problem, I'll, I'll put those things down. But that's, that's about it for the person when his arms are fully stretched. Let's look at what happens when his arms are uh, retracted. When the arms are retracted, you can assume that the man is an 80 kg solid cylinder of 450 mm diameter. So let's draw that. Slightly bigger cylinder of dia 
0.45 and of course he's uh, he's still going to be holding the spheres which are 10 kg well bar, uh, barbells which are 10 kgs and they are at a distance of uh, it's given to be 0.3 meters so 0.3 okay so first of all what's the principle well if you if you if you uh, assume if you do moments or if you look at the system about an axis passing through the center then all the forces acting about the axis are sum to zero so what we can do is we can apply the principle of conservation of angular momentum okay we cannot apply linear momentum because when the person is on a turntable there are forces coming spring from the turntable and those forces causes impulse and those impulses sum of impulses is not zero but you could do angular momentum because even though there are forces those forces actually act at the axis o so the the angular momentum supplied by those forces is zero because r is zero so by this formula h o initial equals h o final and what i mean by one and two is one is when the arms are fully extended so let's call that i1 omega 1 equals i2 omega 2 so if i can find i1 omega 1 i1 and i2 uh, omega 1 is given it's 0.5 omega 2 is unknown so i need to find i1 and i2 and what will help me is is these figures which is an approximation of the geometry and mass distribution of the person so let's find i1 and i'm going to use uh, the figure here okay so essentially it is five things there is the body <coughs> the two arms and the two dumbbells which constitutes the inertia i1 so let's find the inertia one at a time okay let's start with the body that is a 68 kg sphere uh, sorry a cylinder and the inertia about this axis and this is again you got to go back to the table in chapter i think 17 uh, which talks about inertia of different geometries for this the for an axis passing through the center as shown the inertia is half mass which is 68 kg times the radius which is half of 0 0.4, 0 0.2 square. Okay. Next, we need to find the inertia of the arms. Okay, so I'm going to find the inertia of the arms about axis O, about one arm, and then just multiply it by two because there are two arms. So two times two times the inertia of each arm about axis o so first i find the inertia about the center of mass which i have shown so that's going to be 1 12th mass which is 6 times the length squared so length of the arm is 0 0.65 but that's the inertia about the center of mass the black dot i've shown i need to find the inertia about axis o so i need to use the parallel axis theorem so <clears throat> the parallel axis theorem says that the inertia is the inertia about the center of mass which i wrote down plus six times the distance six is the mass times the distance from center of mass which is this the black dot from the axis so this distance is looks like it's 0.2 plus half of this distance 0.325 plus 0.2 so 0.525 so that takes care of the arms i still left with the dumbbells now the dumbbells are point masses 
Okay? They do not have an inertia associated with them. When you have a particle, there's no inertia. Similarly, when you have point mass, no inertia. The only way the masses, since, since they do not have inertia, I about their axis is zero. The only way they contribute towards the inertia is that the dumbbells are a distance of 0 0.85, right? 0 0.2 plus 0 0.65 from the axis. So we need to point, so mass times the radius squared. Mass times, mass is 10 kilograms, times the distance from the dumbbell to the axis O, so 0.85 squared. But that's just the inertia of one dumbbell on the left hand. We need to do that twice to get the inertia of both the dumbbells. So this completes the inertia. It consists of five things I drew. Body, the two arms, and the two dumbbells on each, each hand. So if you sum this up, it comes out to be 19.54 kg meter square. Okay. Any questions on, on that? Yeah. Sure. So I need to find the distance of the center of mass, which I'm just showing here, from the axis O. So this distance, but that's 0 0.2 plus half of 0.65. So 0.525. Is that clear? Okay, so let's find, any other questions? Okay, I2 is the inertia. We need to look at this figure here. Uh, now, when the arms are fully retracted, we can inertia of a cylinder about axis O is 1 divided by 12 sorry, half mr square, my bad, half times the mass, which is 80 kilograms, that's 80, times the radius, which is half of 0 0.45, 0 0.225 square, and that's just one, right, so there's no two there, plus inertia of the point mass barbell, so you know, by the inertia of a point mass is zero, so we only need to find the inertia due to <coughs> parallel axis, so mass, which is 10 times the distance from the mass from the axis, so 0.3 square, and since there are two barbells, I need to put twice. So simplifying this gives me 19, 3.825, 3.825 kg meter square. So now we are all set to use equation, we call that 1 in Roman, from 1, you can write 19.54 times the initial speed, which is given as 0.5 revolutions per second. If you want, you can convert to radians per second, but really there's no point, uh, because I can keep the answer in revolutions per second, equals 3.825 times omega 2. So what you notice is that the initial inertia is 19, about 19, and the final inertia is about 4, and so the inertia has decreased by a factor of 5, and that will be a corresponding increase in the speed. So if you solve for omega 2, you get 2.55 revolutions per second. So what this is saying is that if our calculations are right, if this inertia assumptions are right, then 75 kg then the radius of gyration of 125 millimeters it is turning freely at two radians per second okay that's the initial speed when a fifth when a 50 grams record from a thin disk falls on it determine the final angular velocity of the turntable just after the recording stops slipping on the turntable okay it's exactly similar to uh, what I did instead of moving your arms back and forth uh, the effect is due to addition of a weight, which changes the inertia. So, let's see, let me write down a few things. So, initial mass is 0.75 kgs. The radius of gyration is 0.125 meters. The speed initial is 2 radians per second. Now when you drop the 50 gram record, you get 
seven five plus fifty grams is fifty divided by thousand, so point zero five kgs is the new mass. You got to find the final speed. Okay, so clearly uh, this is a problem involving conservation of angular momentum okay initial <coughs> momentum is equal to the final momentum equals i1 omega 1 equals i2 omega 2 okay so can you solve for omega 2 what you would need is Zero five kg. So what you need extra is that inertia of a disc about an axis z is half mass times r squared. Okay, this is information you would need. So can you solve for omega two and pull the answer? when it is at instant 1 when the disk is not placed on it so the inertia is mass times the radius of gyration squared times the angular speed so that's 2 equals i2 so now when the disk is put on the turntable we have two things to worry about one is the original turntable which is m k square or mass times radius of gyration square plus uh, the inertia of the disk so half the mass of the disk is 0 0.05 times the radius is 0.15 square times omega 2 okay so solving for omega 2 So I got 1.91. Is that right? rod ACB supports two 4 kg discs at its end. So 2 kg rod, 4 kg discs, each of them are 4 kg. Uh, if both discs are given a clockwise speed of 5 radians per second while the rod is held stationary and then released, determine the angular velocity of the rod after both discs have stopped spinning relative to the rod due to frictional resistance at the pins A and B. Motion is in the horizontal plane and neglect friction at pin C. Okay, so this is slightly uh, non intuitive what's going on. So, first of all, this setup is in the horizontal plane. Okay, and so it's spinning in that plane, horizontal plane. It's a gravity it doesn't affect. Uh, initially, you hold the rod the, using a force at pin C so that it does not rotate, but you give the discs at its end speed of 5 radians per second. Okay, once they're rotating at 5 radians per second, you let go. Once you let go, what happens is the whole system starts spinning about axis C. So what happens is A actually, A and B slow down 
and C picks up speed, and eventually they're all spinning at a certain speed. That is, B and A disks are stationary relative to the rod, and the whole thing is moving. Okay? You've got to find the speed when that happens. So again, if you do angular momentum balance, well, if you do, you can do conservation of linear momentum about, my bad, angular momentum, not linear momentum. Angular momentum about C, uh, because all the forces at C would have zero momentum because they're all acting at C. So I, Summation I1 omega 1 equals summation I2 omega 2. Initially, we have only the two disks spinning. So the inertia of the disk is half mass, which is 4 kgs times the radius of the disk, 0.15 square. Since there are two disks, I put a 2. The initial speed is given to be 5 equals the new inertia. Now, in instance two, the rod as well as the disks are spinning, and so we need to find the inertia of the complete setup about axis C. And so what we do is, uh, first let's find the inertia of the rod about an axis passing through C. That's one twelfth mass times the length. So the length is twice 0 0.75, so 1.5 square. So that's the inertia of the rod. Now we need to find the inertia of the disk about an axis passing through C because if the whole system spins about C. So inertia of the disk is half mR squared, so 4 times the radius squared. But that's the inertia about axis passing through the cent their center of mass, which is A and B. We need to find the inertia about C. In order to do that, we use the parallel axis theorem, so plus mass times the distance from A to the center, which is 0 0.75. <coughs> uh, since there are two disks, I just need to multiply the whole this whole expression by 2. And then what's left is, still have space for omega 2, make some space. So omega 2, okay, so every, only the only unknown there is omega 2. Solving gives me omega 2 equals 0 0.0906 radians per second. So you can see that initially the speed of the disks was 5 radians per second, but because they are all spinning now, it's reduced by 0 0.1, so a factor of almost 20. Okay, so uh, Wednesday is the last class which will finish chapter uh, 19 and we'll be done with the syllabus. But after the Thanksgiving break, uh, we will uh, basically do a review.